right, well, here with Matthew McDonald, coming off of second American, top American here, um, number two American. Um, talk me through the race. I mean, it's kind of a, obviously a tough course, tough weather, but talk me through it. Yeah, um, we started really fast too. So in addition to being a tough course, uh, it was a tough start. Um, so I'm local, so I run the course a lot. I think I know it better than anyone else. Um, but the, the beginning parts of the course are a little unfamiliar because I live more in Boston. Um, and there's a lot of downhill and I sometimes forget that. And we just really got rolling. Uh, and we came through the half in just under 64 minutes. So that's nearly a half PR for me. Um, but you know, I, I knew that I was ready to, to run that fast and I could handle that pace and my legs weren't gonna give out. Um, and then as it always does at the big downhill at around mile 15 and a half, uh, it opened up um, and that really split up that group that we were running with, uh, that chase pack. Um, and at that point I was just going to try and stick on Scott Fobble, but then uh, I was feeling really good on the uphills and I tried to make some moves to, to maybe drop him on some of the Newton Hills, but that man can just fly downhill and he caught me on every downhill. And then as we went by Boston College, he just opened up a, a insurmountable lead. Um, and then it was a matter of chasing down some guys that uh, probably uh, were just hurting from a combination of the tough course and the weather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, as you're, what's kind of going through your mind as you know the, the pack is starting to break apart a little bit? What's kind of you know, going through that mindset? What was going through my mind was this pack needs to break apart sooner because we're going way too fast. Mm. And there was a point where I was thinking, do I just let this group go and be a part of the third group um, because we did go out much faster than I would have liked to. Um, but I, I looked around at the guys that were in that group and I figured, you know, the defending top American was in that group and there was a good chance that the top American would come from that group again. And so I stuck with it and I think it probably cost me a little bit of time overall, but place wise, it was the right move. Yeah, and I mean, you know, 210, that's your second fastest ever, right? Just yep. behind your PB. I mean, that still should give a little motivation considering <laughs> all the, you know, the yeah. fast and everything going on, right? Yeah. Um, I would have liked to have run a PR today, and I thought at the halfway point it was possible. Um, but, you know, the conditions weren't fantastic. The course is really tough. Uh, and, you know, we'll save a, a PR for an easier course. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And what, how were you feeling kind of coming into the race? Did you feel, like you said, you know, you were going for that PR. Was training kind of going well coming into the race as well? Training was going fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, so, like I said, I train here in Boston. Yeah. I run the course a couple, t parts of the course a couple times a week. The last four miles, um, I run at least once a week. Uh, run the Newton Hills at least once a week. Um, and, you know, the workouts that we do, we do a lot of hill work on hills that make the Newton Hills look like mole hills. So I was confident that we would be able, or I would be able to get up uh, those hills no problem. But it turns out I got to work on the downhills a bit because um, Scott Fobble really just opened it up and, you know, that really puts a beating on your quads. And, um, you know, for the next Boston or the next race with considerable amounts of downhill, I'm going to just remember that I need to be a bit stronger there. That's something to work on. Absolutely. Um, do you know what your next race is going to be? Is it looking towards the fall or is it uh, Not trials? sure yet. You know, the trials being, what, 10 months away now, there's, right, like Chicago is probably a, a good bet. New York's cutting it a little close, but, you know, I did Chicago last year and it has this habit of being a beautiful year like last year and then 75 degrees and humid. Um, so we'll see. Um, I, I don't know what my fall holds yet. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, considering how you're feeling in this race, coming for, you know, you know just earlier next year when we talk about the trials, being behind uh, Scott Fobble, right? And, you know, of course, Connor Mance and CJ was here. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of the top guys were here. There's obviously a couple guys who are still missing, but how do you kind of feel, you know, with the trials coming up next year? I feel good, but there's a lot of work to do yeah. in the next 10 months. So gonna take a vacation first and then it's time to to put my head back down work hard and um yeah you know there's there's no breaks in this sport there so. you go there you go and just curious in terms of you know of course you had the kenyans and of course you know um Kipchoge was coming mm -hmm. in did, did that like kind of change anything in terms of your mindset as you're entering the race it didn't change anything in terms of my race plan mm -hmm. but it did um 
<laughs> him and I were passing in the hallway at the hotel the other day and like he gave me just a pat on the back, you know, cause, so I could get out of his way. And I was just like <laughs> shocked. And I, I didn't know what to, I said thank you, which I'm sure was like the most awkward interaction in the history of two runners. Um, but you know, he's, you know, the, the greatest ever, even if uh, maybe his Boston performance doesn't show it, right? Who can argue with those world records and those other performances? So obviously someone I look up to and um, didn't change my race, but it, it was cool to line up on the, the course with him. Nice, and then this week, get some rest, but I don't know, what are you, what are you gonna do to kind of celebrate a little bit or, you know? I'm going to Puerto Rico. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get some sun. You know, I've been here all winter, and Boston is not particularly sunny or warm in the winter. Um, so really looking forward to just relaxing in the sun for a bit. There you go. And you had some very cold days here in Boston. A couple mm, yeah. Like, very, yeah, very we cold had days. Uh, like some record-setting cold days. I did more treadmill running this winter than mm -hmm. I have in a while, even though we didn't get much snow. It was yeah. just so bitter cold, you couldn't run outside. Um, but you know, the no snow was nice. It really allowed us to train on some of the big hills we like to train on. Whereas when it does snow, honestly, the only thing that's available for running is the Boston Marathon course, um, which can get tiring, believe it or not. <laughs> very true, very true. Well, amazing job. Looking Thank forward you. to whatever's next in the year. And then of course, trials next year. So. Yeah, me too. Great work. Thank you very much.